So I've had my Tesla Cybertruck for just a little over a month now and have clocked just a little over 1500 miles on it. And over the course of this month, I've been asked so many questions, which I don't mind answering. Let's lead with that one. But I figure with all these questions, I would just compile them all into one video for all of you so that you have all of your answers and everything in one spot. But yeah, enough of that. Let's get started. So the first question that I probably get asked the most is, Matt, what's the range on this thing? And as easy as that is to answer, it's still kind of difficult as well. So since this is the foundation edition, foundation series, and it has the 35 inch tires and it's an all wheel drive, the expected EPA range on this thing is 320 miles. The real question is probably people are asking like, Matt, do you actually get 320 miles? And the answer is, Absolutely not. Probably like I get more around anywhere from 290 to 300 just because one, I love driving this thing and I do not drive this thing conservatively at all. I, uh, I would say I drive this thing like I stole it. I, I use every opportunity I possibly can to floor this thing just because this is so much fun. Like I thought my Model Y was quick at 4.8 seconds, zero to 60. Just the fact that, you know, something that's this big has a 4.1 second, zero to 60 is insane. And in fact, this truck weighs to over 6,600 pounds, just a smidge over 6,600. But so to quickly answer your question, yes, rated at 320 miles. Are you going to get that? No. And also there's other factors that contribute into that as well as, uh, you know, like uh, temperature, altitude, just how well you drive, air conditioning, heating, stuff like that. So like I said, in the traditional, you know, electric vehicle fashion, do pre be prepared for that, that you're most likely will not get the range that is expected. Something else I get asked is the fact that this truck is stainless steel, how's this thing do with fingerprints? Is it a fingerprint magnet? And the thing is, the answer is, <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. Like I said, uh, be prepared for that when you take delivery of yours that, yes, you're gonna get fingerprints on this thing and you either kind of have to deal with it, but then again, there is a simple solution. It's literally Windex and a rag. I literally just spray the rag with just a little bit of Windex and you wipe it off. And as simple as that, fingerprints are gone. Said so you can also take this thing through touch three, touch free car washes. I've done that, I think about once or twice now, but yep, as you can tell, there are no fingerprints whatsoever. And it's a pretty easy thing to clean. Like, like I said, keeping the stainless steel, that's nice. That's one thing, but I know some people have been wrapping it, doing clear PPF, which the name PPF paint protection film on a cyber truck is just, it's interesting. It's an interesting name. It needs, it needs to be named something else, but Overall, it's not bad to keep clean. It's pretty simple for me. Uh, I know if you're one of those, if you never wash your vehicle, if you're kind of a clean freak, it may be a bit of an adjustment for you, but overall, it's not bad. All right, another question that I get asked as well is just how big is the truck bed in this thing? And we're about to answer that. And yes, there is a truck bed here. It's just hidden behind this crazy tonneau cover, which this thing is impressive. Like I said, it is extremely hard and you can actually stand on it. I think it can withstand up to like 300 pounds or more standing on it. But first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open the tonneau cover and I got my trusty tape measure here and I'm actually going to measure the truck bed for you personally. So it's got a nice push button touch lower. But like I said, we're gonna take our trusty tape measure, put it all the way to the back. And this truck bed measures just a little over six feet, but honestly, I'm just gonna call it six feet. That's much easier to say. It's like six feet and like a little half of an inch. So overall, that's not a bad size truck bed, and especially too, it doesn't have any, you know, like wheel well, like uh, liners or anything like that. Cause you know, like on some other trucks, you'll see like these giant bulges from the side from tires. This, you don't have to worry about that. And then also too, you do have some nice under trunk storage here as well. You can store quite a bit. And it also does come with a nice little plug at the bottom so that you can actually use this as a cooler. You can fill it with ice and your uh, beverage of choice. We'll leave it at that. And you can just literally, when you're done, when the ice is all melted, just unscrew the drain and it will drain out through the bottom. But yes, six foot bed and there are plenty of uses for this. I've seen people actually use this thing as a hot tub already, which I thought was very interesting. It's kind of one of those interesting quirky features. Like, could that be a future uh, accessory? Cyber hot tub in the back of the cyber truck? Maybe. All right, another question I get asked is, so when you picked up the truck, were there any issues with it? And oh boy, yes there were. 
And yes, Tesla, I'm not letting you off the hook that easily. So yes, when I did pick up the truck, there were some panel alignment issues, some slight door issues. And, you know, I posted a video about that pretty much like the day after, like I picked up the truck. So basically I pick up the truck, I point out every issue that was had, and then I just ended up bringing it back the next day. And in less than a day, Tesla fixed my issues, which, you know, I commend them for that. But I caught a lot of flack from people online like, oh, why would you even take delivery of that piece of junk, blah, 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 everything. Under I got called every name under the sun of uh, why I would take delivery of such a vehicle. And the answer to that, in my opinion, those issues posed no risk to my safety. And that's why I picked it up and I delivered it the way it was. Because if it was something more like, you know, a drive unit issue or an airbag issue, like something that, you know, just might cause me issues later down the road or I wouldn't have taken delivery. I would have made them fix it, you know, right there on the spot or I would have just waited. Uh, but literally I dropped this thing off the next day and in less than a day I had my truck back in my possession and everything I told them was wrong was fixed. Like I said, yes, there are panel issues, but at, like in my opinion, point them out, let Tesla know and they'll take care of it. Like I said, they want to make sure that you're happy. Like I said, is Tesla perfect with their panel alignment issues? No, but are they getting there? Yes. Uh, so this question, I feel that we need to address this. People ask me constantly to the point that where if I got a dollar for every time somebody asked this, I wouldn't need to work. I could retire today, but people want to know, does this thing rust? The answer is no. I don't know how that even became a thing. I'm not even, I think some, one, like, you know, one of those like news media outlets, spread that rumor that cyber trucks were coming like rusted or they were rusting in less than a day and it just took off like wildfire from there but let me guarantee you this thing does not rust i've owned this truck for a month this thing has been you know out in the rain it's been fine it has not rusted other than you're going to get some crazy hard water spots especially here in the southwest where i live uh from rain that's about it i have not seen a sign of rust yeah i think i think that's enough about that all right, I know the question that's been on everyone's minds is just how much does this thing cost to drive per month in terms of electricity? And that's actually a great question. So, of course, it really depends on your area, just how much you're charged for electricity. But I'll use me for an example. So I'm on a very special rate plan here in Las Vegas. And so I draw uh, like doing the math, crunching the numbers. This truck costs me about anywhere from forty five to fifty dollars a month to drive and electricity, which overall is not bad for something this size. Like that's pretty insane. Uh, crunching some numbers, if if this thing, like, you know, the gas equivalent of this thing in terms of MPG and the price of gas here, I would be spending over $400 a month just in gasoline. So just the fact that, you know, I'm saving roughly $350 a month just by driving the Cybertruck. And also my insurance is a lot cheaper on this thing as well. What's, cr what's crazy is, uh, so I'm paying less than a, like around $140 for, for truck insurance for this thing. My Model Y was $175. And I know I've been seeing a lot of, about that, about apparently uh, insurance has been going through the roof lately. Uh, they're blaming it on inflation, which I think that's a bunch of crap. Uh, um, the fact that I'm, you know, I'm 36 and I've never been in an accident and I've never had a ticket and my rates just keep going up and up and up for nothing is, I don't know, it's just wild in my opinion. But yes, 50 bucks a month, we'll say, to, uh, to in electricity to drive this thing. Overall, pretty impressive. All right, so I get asked a lot, like, is there anything that you don't like about the truck? And yeah, absolutely. There are some things that I just do not like about this truck. And if somebody tells you that there's nothing, like they absolutely don't hate anything and this truck is perfect like on social media, don't listen to them. Like, sure, that's their opinion, but there are some things in this truck that Tesla could have done better. Uh, one of them is the rear view mirror, which as you can see, mine is missing because I removed it. it. It's absolutely worthless in this vehicle, which yes, I do understand by law, they have to ship this vehicle with a rear view mirror, but yeah, it just doesn't do anything. It's, it's just pointless. So that's why I removed it. One, because one, the, the back glass is so small, and the fact that it doesn't come down either, I was kind of hoping for, you know, the glass to actually uh, retract into the truck itself, just for maybe get a little breeze going. The fact they didn't do that was a little disappointing. But yes, no uh, dinky rear view mirror, and the fact that I can't roll my back glass down. And so most of the stuff I don't like is in the cabin. The next thing we're going to talk about is 
this. Uh, your overall, your little shade thing here. So as I'm driving, say that the sun gets here on the side in my way and I want to put my sunshade off to the side. Oh no, it hits me in the head. Like literally I have to like do some weird like craziness to like to get my little visor over here. Like it's, it's very interesting how they kind of, I kind of wish they did it like the Model X where you kind of have to fold it down. That would have been a little bit easier. But yeah, if I ever like, you know, need to put this to the side, I literally have to like make sure one, I'm still paying attention to the road and just kind of put, put this thing off to the side, which I guess I could put my seat lower, but I don't like to drive lower. I shouldn't have to do that. So that was just an overall very interesting kind of quirk as I, you know, start getting used to this vehicle. Uh, another thing as well, which I'll kind of zoom in just a little bit more, is the side buttons. So uh, the side buttons, in terms of like, you know, your emergency release and your uh, your window controls, they are too far back. They need to be put forward. There's plenty of room here. And the big reason I'd say they need to be moving farther, like forward. So if I want to roll down my windows, literally, I have to like put my hand like almost in the back seat to roll my windows down. It's a little inconvenient. If you got maybe tiny arms, it'll work a little bit better for you. But the fact that, you know, my hand rests here, my, my uh, door buttons and all that for my windows and everything should be right here. So if I were Tesla, I would just move these just a little bit forward because there's still plenty of room to move these buttons forward as well as have enough room to where I can still have a little cubby here to open and close the door. Something else that I don't like in particular about the Cybertruck is the frunk itself. And no, I don't mean the size of the frunk. I'm actually thankful, one, that this thing has a frunk, and two, if I can find the button, is the fact that it's powered. Yes, the first Tesla with a powered frunk. It's the fact that this thing is just not sensitive enough when it senses, you know, that it's being closed on something, aka maybe like a human appendage or something like that. Because I'm not gonna lie, if you're maybe if you have a if you have smaller arms or you know if you're like a kid and if you like if they some reason like get their fingers or anything caught in here while the front is closing it might not end well for them i'm actually going to demonstrate that right now and yes i've done this before to me it's completely safe so it, don't freak out people but as you can see when i close the front i'll put my arm out here and as it starts to close like, as you can see, I kind of had to put quite a bit of pressure on there just to actually make the front go back up, which, uh, so Wes, he's actually the chief engineer on the Cybertruck. He's actually already addressing this as we speak. They're actually testing this and re kind of vamping that overall process as we speak. I think he said, uh, death to a lot of carrots. They've been testing it on a lot, a lot of carrots, but, uh, of course, probably by the time this video even makes it to light, this actually might be fixed via an over-the-air software update. So I'm really happy to see that Tesla is kind of already on that to, to make this frunk a lot safer because, yeah, because like I said, you don't want, you know, your, your kid or anything getting their fingers or their hand or anything caught in there. But recommendation for the meantime, before you close the frunk, make sure everybody's clear, like, you know, kids, pets, anything like that. And we'll say when you close the button, just step away and you're all good to go. I wouldn't recommend closing or, or closing this frunk without your eyes being on it. Just my simple recommendation, but it could, it could definitely uh, save you in the future. So something else I'm not a big fan of about the Cybertruck, and it has nothing to do with Tesla or the Cybertruck itself. It's actually the amount of hate that I'm getting online for simply owning this vehicle. Uh, I don't know where this stemmed from. This seems to be a very recent thing. Uh, but instead of seeing something you don't like and continuing to scroll, especially when it comes to the Cybertruck, people feel the need to comment on just how ugly this thing is, how it's not really a truck, which that crowd's actually starting to die down. That makes me happy that, because I remember when, before this thing even came out, one, oh, this thing isn't even real. Now that it's being produced, oh, it's not a real truck. Now that people are doing real truck stuff with it, so now that's now now that crowd is starting to die down. But, but yeah, like you know, people are like calling me an idiot for taking delivery of this, you know, this beautiful vehicle because for me, I love the way this thing looks, I love the way it handles, and I love it overall. This is a solid vehicle. It's the most fun vehicle I've ever driven, and I'm happy. And no keyboard warrior online is going to take that away from me. Sorry. I get asked a lot too, just how well does this thing handle? How's the, the ride quality, the driving quality? But I'm not gonna stand here and answer that. So we're actually gonna hop in the truck and we're gonna go for a quick drive and I'm gonna show it off to you. All right, so now that we're in the vehicle, we're gonna take it on a quick drive. 
uh, just to kind of show off the handling and discuss some other things as well. So to put it into drive, there's a couple of ways. There is the emergency way of, uh, there are some controls up here, just for some reason the screen dies, but this thing also does have auto shift beta where I just simply press on the brake pedal and it uses the cameras to decide which direction I wanna go. That will be that will be shown with the little cyber truck here going forward. So that does mean that it's in drive, but yeah, here we go. So first thing I would get asked is the steering wheel, which Franz and Lars and all of them call it the Squirkle. Still not a fan of that at all, but you know, it is what it is. If you're like, well, how's the steering wheel? And honestly, so I'm a big fan. I was very skeptical at first when I took delivery because it just looks funky. I'm like, there's no way this thing's gonna be practical, but it is. For like for the big reason is, so no matter where your hand placement is while you drive, it's comfortable. So for example, if you're a 10 and two driver, you like to keep your hands at 10 and two, it's comfortable. Uh, if you wanna, for long road trips, if you wanna place your hands down here, that works as well. Or I find myself a lot putting my hand up here while I drive. And thanks to the four wheel steering, I can simply just turn the wheel a little bit and this thing makes a nice little turn. Simple as that. Because not only do we have four wheel steering, but we also have steer by wire. So basically this wheel is not mechanically connected to the wheels at all. It is all just sensors, redundant, uh, redundant sensors and stuff like that. But yes, the steering wheel works. I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. I do like that they got uh, rid of like kind of the haptic feedback buttons and now we're kind of to just traditional buttons because there'll be so many times if you're driving, you know, a refresh S or an X that like you'll hit the horn or something by accident or hit the turn signals. And yes, this thing does have a traditional horn in the center finally they got rid of the little button that was probably the best thing they ever did but uh, next thing we'll talk about is something that's a little bit interesting is so the motors in this thing are a bit loud they're a lot louder than i expected but don't take my word for it i'll shut up here for a second and i'll let you hear it Yeah, you see, like, those are a lot louder than I expected. They sound good, though. Not going to lie. Like, they sound fantastic. But I was just surprised when I first drove the truck just how, you know, loud these were, especially on the freeway. Combined with having 35-inch tires, you are going to get some road noise, especially on the freeway. So uh, don't be shocked. But like I said, you have a truck with 35-inch tires. If you expect this thing to be, like, silent as the grave, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry to disappoint, but... uh but overall, like I said, it's still fun to drive. Uh, the only exception, which I still thought this was interesting, this truck did not, there's no autopilot yet. No autopilot, no FSD, which like I said, I was shocked. I didn't even hear anything about that until a week prior to taking delivery because I was expecting to at least have basic autopilot. They said it's going to come in a future software update, which in my opinion, that is a poor excuse. I'm kind of sick of hearing that. Uh, certain people online defend that, like that's their, they will die on that hill is, well, it's okay. It's coming like all these features that we're supposed to get with Tesla products. Like, oh, it's, it's okay. It's coming in a future software update. Like, no, stop that. Don't release something until it's ready, at least autopilot. Cause I'm not gonna lie. So I drive 60 miles round trip to work every day. And of course I'm on nights and I would love to have autopilot while I'm, you know, commuting in the middle of the night. The fact that I don't have that is a little bit annoying, but you know, it is what it is, but I really hope that autopilot is coming soon, but we'll see. Something else we need to talk about as well is the fact that when I engage the turn signal, my rear view camera goes away no matter what. I would like to see in a future software update where both pop up, because now I can't see what's behind me. I can only see what's to the left of me. And then once it goes away, then my rear view camera comes back. So I would love to see rear view camera and turn signal camera, whichever direction that be left or right. Cause yeah, that's a little bit annoying. Uh, yeah, you hear those motors? Ooh, God, that's it. they sound good in my opinion. Uh, I know a lot are concerned about blind spots and really that's not that big of an issue in my opinion. Yeah, because yes, the uh, both the A pillars do have uh, windows as well, so that makes blind spots pretty much non-existent. Don't get me wrong; these A pillars are huge, but combined with you know the A pillar window and the big you know fisheye lens cameras that are on each side, I don't find blind spots to be an issue at all.
it's not that big of a deal. Let's see, moving on. I think I've said enough about blind spots, stuff like that. Uh, I do highly recommend get glass coverage for your this behemoth of a windshield. I don't even know how much this would cost to replace. My guess would be probably 2,500 to maybe 3,000 would be my guess. So I luckily have a zero deductible glass on this. So yeah, highly recommend that. And also, so something that's funny, there's a couple of things. Uh, one, the looks you're going to get, speak of the devil, like, I don't know if you can't see him, but he's looking as well. The looks that you're going to get driving this vehicle, uh, it's a little bit overwhelming at times. Uh, you're going to see people constantly with their phones out on the freeway where actually somebody actually almost hit my truck one day because they were so busy trying to like record on the freeway that they almost merged into me. So that, I thought that was uh, very interesting as well. But yeah, just keep that in mind that if you're like, like I said, if you're introverted in any way, you don't like talking to people, uh, this might not be the truck for you. Because one, let's, let's kind of dive deeper into that. I haven't quite found the happy place, like the happy boundary of so like I'll be out running errands and you know, the truck will be parked somewhere and there will be, I'd say half a dozen, a dozen or more people taking pictures, taking bids of the truck. Cause one, it's unique, it's new, it's never been seen before. Considering this is the first one in Las Vegas, a lot, you know, people have just never seen one, but I never know what to do. Like, I don't want to just not say anything and get into the truck and then leave. Like I, I end up finally just talking to people for like 10, 15, 30 minutes. And then I finally go on my merry way. So do keep that in mind while owning this vehicle. I'd say it's going to be like this, I'd say for probably a year. That would be my guess. Like it's fun. I enjoy it. Like I kind you know, as a content creator, it's basically what I signed up for. Uh, people at Tesla described you like, you're basically like the ambassador for Las Vegas for Cybertruck right now, which I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. But like I said, sometimes a little bit inconvenient. So if you got some place to be like at a certain time, keep that in mind while driving this truck. Uh, uh, probably my most favorite thing driving this truck is the fact that people think twice before cutting me off. Yes. And I'm going to explain that a little bit further, but I'm used to Vegas drivers. Vegas drivers are very interesting. For example, like I'll be merging onto the freeway and in my old car, in my Model Y, and people will just merge over, no signal, no nothing, and like almost hit my car. This, I don't have to worry about that. A uh, great example, I wish I kept the video footage of it, but so somebody was merging onto the freeway, as usual, no signal, no nothing, and I could see in their side view mirror, as they're merging over, I see their eyes get real wide and then they immediately like go back over into their lane because they saw the cyber truck as one when it comes to your car or my cyber truck in an accident i'm going to win i'm going to win every single time unless it's like a semi truck i probably won't win that but but yeah it's quite an interesting experience that people just finally have a little moment of pause before they decide to uh to merge out in front of me i said it's, it's fun like, well, kind of show this thing's U-turn skills, but yeah, just look how, just how easy, how nimble this thing is making a U-turn. It's fantastic. Like, I think this thing does U-turns actually better than my Model Y did. Like I said, just the overall handling is just so smooth, so nimble. I, I really can't complain. Like I said, the only thing I'm going to complain about is no autopilot, but I got to drive like a normal person, but you know, what, what whatever, whatever. It's a little bit windy out as well, but uh, yeah, you can hear those hear those motors. They're just chiming up. I think I'm going the right way. I know. I think I really covered everything, though. Like I said, this might be a little bit longer video than uh, you're used to, but like I said, I tried to go into as much detail as I possibly could about this. But yeah, back to me. All right, that's all I got for you today. I hope you really enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, haven't subscribed yet, hit that little subscribe button. It helps me out a ton. And two, I will leave a referral link for Tesla down in the description below. Uh, if 
you find my content somewhat educational or if it's helped you out in any way and you're considering ordering a Tesla, feel free to use my referral code. I know some of the perks change often. I think right now they're actually offering three free months of full self-driving, which if you haven't experienced uh, a Tesla or full, full self-driving, I highly recommend it. Uh, they just did release version 12 out to the public. And of course I haven't had a chance to experience it just yet, but hopefully soon. But I've heard it's been doing great things, but yep. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. See ya.